Say hello, Avery. Hello. <laughs> My daughter, Avery, she was four when she was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is a leukemia, a cancer that affects her blood system. So it's it's common, I, I found out, um, but it's a very long treatment process. So prior to her diagnosis, life was pretty normal. Um, I was a truck driver, um, going to school for accounting. Avery is a twin. You know, she's an identical twin sister named Ari. She has two older siblings, Aaliyah and Aiden. Um, dad works. Like it was just, it was just pretty, pretty normal. You know, so surprise, surprise. <laughs> Well, the twins are similar but extremely different. One twin goes to bed, her, her twin goes to bed um, at eight o'clock sharp every night, no problem. This is the twin that stays up all night, kind of, you know, eats peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all day. So for two days, I noticed that um, she was taking a lot of midday naps and that's not like her and no peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Like that's, that's a, a big deal you know, in this household. So I just took the chance. I brought her to Children's Hospital. I told the physicians, I'm like, I don't know. It's just, she just, it's no other way to explain it other than saying she seemed fragile. <laughs> and that's not like her, you know, because they're kind of rough and tough and like the climb and run around. And she just seemed just kind of fragile. So they did some blood work. And that's how we got the news. What we thought was just gonna be a quick, a quick checkup, you know, <laughs> take a few days off, you know, turn into a whole nother lifestyle. Looking back, it's kind of hard to really pinpoint the feelings. If I had to summarize it, I would say just fear. You don't think about certain things until you're you're going through it or you know you, you have to live it you know so I would see like the St. Jude commercials all the time but I just never thought you know I would be able to sympathize and empathize with these people like I just I never would have guessed it you know I never would have guessed it so fast forward if the best way I can describe those first few months it was just fear the fear of the unknown was terrifying, <laughs> absolutely terrifying. And that's just on a medical standpoint. <laughs> My biggest prayer for her right now is over the summer, She's she just enjoys her break from going to the hospital every week, you know, two and three times a week. Okay. Um, and then in August, I, I just pray that she has a smooth transition into going back to school. Like she's really, really excited about that, you know, and I just, I want her to, to continue to get better and heal at her own pace. You know, I can't wait till she's at school playing with her friends. I know, I know you probably wanted to have like a certain, I don't know, like a, a, a certain adventure we would do or something but the biggest thing is just her getting back to herself like that's really the only thing <laughs> that I'm like really hopeful for right now like I just can't wait till she gets back to herself and able to do things that she wants to do she can't really interact with everybody because her immune system is so compromised so like right now you know we're in New Orleans so it's Mardi Gras season there's parades going around and she can't go you know, she can't go. We had this for her, their birthday was in August. We had a virtual birthday party. That has been a huge adjustment for her, the other kids and myself, because it's not that I don't want to spend time or be around anybody. I'm just so afraid that she's going to get sick. You know, a, a, a common cold to you can be something very different, you know, for her. So I just can't wait until some of the restrictions can come off. <laughs>